trade deadline 09. Uh, a lot happened today. Off to a slow start, but I'm going to try and fly through everything so I can hopefully squeeze this in as quick as possible. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to start off by saying there were four teams today that I thought won today. Uh, the Calgary Flames, Ottawa Senators, Phoenix Coyotes, Florida Panthers. I'll explain that why later in the video and, and so on. Um, to me, the three teams that lost that I don't like what they did, New York Rangers, Toronto Maple Leafs, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, okay, I'm going to start off by explaining why Calgary won today. Okay, first trade they did was Jordan Leopold for Lawrence Nicolat and Ryan Wilson. Now, I don't know too much about prospect Ryan Wilson, but essentially you're getting rid of a minor leaguer, a career AHLer, and a pick for Jordan Leopold, who will be a good pucky moving defense, which is what they need. So that was a very good trade for Calgary. Now, the next trade, they got Ole Jokinen for Matthew Lombardi and Brandon Preston, a first rounder. Now, some people say a first rounder might be a lot to give up, but Jokinen is that missing piece of the puzzle that Calgary needed because they're weak up the middle and he'll solidify them. Hopefully, you know, he'll fit in with the Ginla nicely while Lankhouse hurt, so it should go. But this is one of the few trades um, where I like it from both sides because Calgary gets a top player in Jokinen, but Phoenix doesn't screw themselves because they get Lombardi and Prust, which will fit in nicely, and that first rounder could turn out to be a decent prospect one day. Okay, Mom, um, second team I like what they did, the Ottawa Senators. Now, everyone knows a few days ago they got... Campoli and Comrie from the Islanders for Dean McCammon. Now that was a good trade in itself. Campoli is solid young defense. Comrie I'm not sold on, but either way, it was a good for a trade for them. And then they re-signed Cuba for um, just over $3 million a year. A bit more than I would have paid him, but again, it solidifies him on defense a little bit and got that wrapped up, so that was a good move. And then the trade I really liked um, was they got Pascal Leclerc for Antoine Vermette. Now Antoine Vermette has been a career underachiever. He's had many chances to flourish, and he hasn't. Pascal Leclerc played 65 games last year with Columbus and got nine shutouts on a marginal team. He is bona fide number one goalie, which is the one thing Ottawa has been lacking for a while. I didn't expect Ottawa to do too much of anything today, um, except maybe sell a few players, but to get Leclerc for Vermette was a great trade for them. Um, in my opinion, one of the best trades of the day, if not the best from a team standpoint. Okay, now Florida. They didn't do a whole lot, which is why I like it. They finally got a chance to make the playoffs this year, and... They, they're showing their fans they want to make it by keeping Jay Bo Meester. Yes, they're running the risk of losing him in the offseason, but the thing is, he doesn't like being in Florida, I would assume, because they've never really won and he's sick of losing. Well, now they're showing him, we're making a push, stay with us. So um, I like that move, get him in the playoffs. And then they trade Noel Welch for Steve Eminger. All right, we have a career HLR versus a guy who really started to turn it on in Tampa Bay on the defense, great offensive defenseman. I like that trade again. Mind you, I watched a lot of Eminger when he played in Kitchener and he was a great player. But, anyways, I really like that trade from Florida's perspective. Doesn't seem like a big trade to everyone, but trust me, that one might make a difference down the line. And uh, the last team I like what they did was the Phoenix Coyotes. Now, they absolutely robbed the New York Rangers. Like, Derek Morris for Dimitri Kalinin, Peter Pruka, and Nigel Dawes. Okay, Morris for Kalinin, to me, would seem like a fair trade. Morris, he's he peaked, like, four years ago. He's just kind of... You know, humming along now, putting up okay numbers. I don't think he even has 15 points this season, and they were bringing him in for the power play. I don't know what's about that, but um, Kleenin is essentially a more defensive version of Derek Morris with less power play upside. So, essentially all they're doing is stabilizing their defense, minusing the power play, and then they're going to give him two young, promising forwards to go along with it. Now, New York's forwards are not good this year, so you're giving up Nigel Dawes, who... You know, has his skill and has been getting steadily better as the year goes on. And Peter Pruka, a dude who has scored 20 goals in the NHL in one season. Mind you, he's having an off season, But still, nonetheless, that seems like a terrible, terrible trade from the Rangers' standpoint. But either way, um, and then, of course, the Jokin and deal, like what they got in return for him. Then they traded Scotty Upshaw for Daniel, Daniel Carcillo. Um, I kind of like this trade because Upshaw brings him a bit more veteran experience. Carcillo is kind of younger, but they play a similar style, just... Upshaw doesn't take as many penalties. So like that, and then they pawned off Tel Chris for fourth rounder, and it seems like a bad trade from their standpoint, but what it does is it gives him a chance to bring up a prospect goalie towards the end of the season to train him to eventually mature him into a number one goalie because, in my opinion, Brizgalov is not it. Okay, wow, I'm talking really fast here. But anyways, on to the losers of the day. Um, I don't like what the Rangers did at all. Um, they got Antropov for the Leafs for a second-round pick. Now, Antropov is another one of those classic underachievers. He's will help their offense out a bit, but not as much as they think they will. I, th I think a second-round pick was a bit much for Antropov. Um, but either way, they made that trade. Might work out. We don't know. And then there was the Morris trade, which was just a complete joke. And another team I didn't like what they did. Toronto. Now, they've been preaching all year, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling. 
They only get rid of two players. Like, are you kidding me? Moore, who the only reason they even got rid of him was because he refused to sign or they couldn't come to terms with him. And then Antropov because Burt publicly stated that they're going to get rid of him. Now, where they screwed themselves on this one is they let everyone know they were going to fire sell and everyone was available, therefore driving down the value. If they said they may be for sale, then people will come, but they might offer up a little more because I think the Dominic Moore trade to the Sabres for a second round pick, you could have got more for Dominic Moore. He's having a great season. He's a great energy guy. You know, you might not have been able to get that first round pick, but you could have probably gotten a second and a fourth or a second and a fifth for him. Either way, that was... I don't like that trade. They just really, for a team that's been preaching trade deadline all year, they did nothing. And then the whole Ole Kolzig, Jamie Heward, and Rogers for Pettiot. Why? Like, because I, I heard that it was just because Tampa wanted to clear up some cap space. And, like, it was only, like, $500,000. It seemed really irrelevant. But either way, that just seemed like the complete a completely pointless trade. And Tampa, I just... Don't like anything they did. They needed to do something today, and they did nothing. They got rid of one of their few defense who's actually been having a good season in Steve Eminger for a guy who's been spending most of his career in the AHL and likely will not mature into the NHL as they think he'll be. And, of course, they got Richard Pettiot from the Leafs. Ooh. So they really did nothing when they should have done a lot. So Tampa Bay, you screwed up. Now on to some of the random trades and acquisitions of the day I want to talk about. Now, the most confusing trade of the day was obviously the one that took place between L.A., Carolina, and Edmonton. So, for those of you who haven't fully understood what's happened, here's what happened. The L.A. Kings traded Patrick O'Sullivan to the Carolina Hurricanes for Justin Williams. So now Justin Williams is on the Kings and he's staying there. But then the Hurricanes took Patrick O'Sullivan, traded him to the Oilers for Eric Cole. So that was... Um, in this whole standpoint, really, I can't see anyone losing this trade. It seems like a three-way good deal. Uh, Patty O'Sullivan should be someone who should be able to play with Alex Hemsky, which is good from the Edmonton standpoint. Eric Cole goes back to Carolina where he had his best years to play alongside Eric Stahl because Eric Stahl's been tanking this year, so hopefully that wakes him up. And Justin Williams is good veteran experience to add to the young group that they have in L.A. right now, so hopefully that'll stabilize it. They didn't really give up the farm. I like that trade from everyone's perspective. Somehow, in amongst all these trades, the Oilers ended up with a second-round pick which they then sent to Buffalo for Alex Kotelik. Again, another good move. Kotelik's good offensive upside, good on the power play, can play the point on the power play, which Edmonton needs with Visnovsky out. And all they're giving up is a second rounder. Good trade for them. Then another really good trade by Chicago. They acquired Sammy Paulson from the Anaheim Ducks for a couple of prospects. I'm not even going to mention their names because I personally know nothing about these guys because they play off in the Western League. Um, but either way, the Hawks need that depth up front to contend. They're still missing a few pieces. I don't think they're up at the level of Calgary, Detroit, and San Jose yet, but they're close now with this Paulson acquisition. The next trade. The Boston Brewers acquired Mark Recchi from the Tampa Bay Lightning for Matt Lashoff and Martin Carsons. Now, this trade doesn't seem like a whole lot. It really isn't a big deal. I don't see how Recchi's going to fit into Boston's lineup. He, he'll do all right. He'll do good, put up good third-line minutes, but... I don't know, Boston's a really young and fast team, and Recchi's kind of just the old guy to stabilize them. I don't know, I don't think he'll put up the numbers that he did in Tampa Bay there, but he'll give them what they need in the dressing room. But I didn't like that they gave up two decent prospects, because Lashoff, he's developing slowly, but I still like his chances to becoming a good defense in the NHL. And Martin Carsons, I don't know too much about, so I'm not going to touch on it, but I have heard good things about him. Okay, next trade. So, Bill Guerin goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins for a conditional pick. Who really cares? Pittsburgh... I don't know. I really don't know what to think about Bill Guerin. He'll just be someone to push Crosby. He won't play with Crosby. At least I don't think he should anyway. He's too slow to play with Crosby or Malkin. But either way, just veteran experience to get there. Um, And then another thing is the Maple Leafs claim Martin Gerber off waivers from the Senators. I did not think anyone would be dumb enough to do that until I heard Tosco was out for the season. So that now makes sense. And I'm not going to say that is a bad move because, well, they picked him up for nothing. And he'll play the rest of the season. So, Leaf fans, Tank Nation, are rejoicing now. And another move I like that not a lot of people took notice for is the Dallas Stars claim Brendan Morrison off waivers from the Ducks. Now, uh, Brad Richards is hurt for Dallas, and they haven't been playing too well as of late, and they're really starting to lack up the middle. So, now this will stabilize. It'll give someone, I don't know, maybe he'll fit in a line with Louis Erickson and Mike Medano because they've been trying to find someone to go with those two guys all year, and they haven't found anything because when Richards was out, you know, Louie went with Richards and someone. They've always been lacking that one 
one extra offensive piece up front. So even though Morrison's not great, he might just be what they need to stabilize it.